So welcome to the uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for June 1st, 1st uh, 2022. Happy June. Um, the time is 5.02 p.m. This is a hybrid uh, Zoom uh, meeting. So this meeting will be held in hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's uh, June 16th, 2021 Act, extending certain provisions of the COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting uh, or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of uh, Deerfield Municipal Offices with um, remote participation um, noted below here. So there's a, a toll-free number to dial in. It's 833 uh, 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Should you need the passcode, it's 570012. If you go to the town of Deerfield's website, um, you can uh, go down to the bottom right where the calendar is and find a link to this uh, meeting where you will then find the agenda link and then a link to the Zoom meeting. So if you'd like to attend by Zoom, you're welcome to do that. Um, if you're you know, on the phone landlines, you'd use star six to mute your phone and mute your Zoom um, until asking a question and then state your name and where you're from and, um, and, and, you're, and wait to speak until others have, are done speaking. So our agenda tonight, um, we have an executive um, session that we're holding uh, first, and then we'll be back hopefully right around six o'clock uh, to, to do our, our normal meeting. So um, I will read the, uh, the motion here and ask for a second. So pursuant to general law chapter 30A, section 21A3, and subject to the chairman's declaration and roll call vote, the select board may meet in, open, uh, in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IUPA, AFL-CIO, the police department, and UPSEU, the highway, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. I so declare, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great, and I will also uh, invite in our attorney, Kate Federoff, um, and Casey Warren, our town administrator, and I'm not sure if John Paturik is on as well. And then we will be inviting in uh, Kevin Scarborough, our Kevin. Uh, uh, DPW um, highway chief. So great. So and then we'll we'll return to open session hopefully at six o'clock earlier if we if we can. So um, Casey, would you want to bump us into the other room or or Jen if maybe Jen's doing that? I'm doing it. Okay, thank you so much. We'll be back in open session shortly. Okay, welcome back to the um, Deerfield Select Board meeting, Board of Health meeting for June 1st, 2022. We're coming back out of executive session at 6, 12 p.m. Um, we are going to take a, let's see here, one second. We can vote um, the police union contract right now. All right, well, let's do that. Um, do I have a copy of it in here or not? Or I just, it's actually I just, in the signature file. In the signature file. It's in the it's in the envelope. In the All right, perfect. File. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion to approve the um, contract between the town of Deerfield and the Massachusetts Coalition of Police I IUPA A L F C O the Police Officers Unit. Um, subject to ratification of funding. So we have uh, done all of that. And I think we will be taking this to a town meeting vote again later. Uh, we voted it once, but it wasn't quite ratified in time. So we're going to take that again to our next town meeting. Um, so I'll do a second. Thank you. Um, Any further discussion? Small, small piece of discussion. Please. Um, there's a typo, a problem out on the signature page. Because the, uh, the union is 
AFL CIO and it's ALF CIO. Oh, thank you. So ALF CIO. ALF. So we could probably correct that and have them. Yes, initial. Scribblers. Okay. Yeah. Scribblers. It's a Scrivener's error. Scrivener's yeah. or Scribblers? <laughs> Scrivener's. Both. <laughs> the Scribbler love error. That old term. Okay, so we have a mm -hmm. signature by them. Uh, so it's I have a second. And any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim LG, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Here's my pen. I want to also thank um, Kate Federoff, who helped work on this, and Casey, who has worked, in, and uh, Dave uh, Wolfram, who also uh, was working hard on this contract, and, and the police officers union. They, they, you know, everybody negotiated in good faith and did a great job, and um, I'm really happy with where we're at. And um, that's, that's it. So, by you. you um and i'll start um with public comment is there any way some comment hi, hi jen hi i was just gonna see if you wanted to do that vote for your reorganization too yes we will um, definitely do that do you want me to talk about the reasons the reasons for the yeah go ahead sure i'll just and then we'll remind, do public her, we'll remind everybody what jennifer said per, prior to the meeting starting as an informational detail um you have the South Deerfield wastewater treatment facility upgrades loan for approval and signature. The documents are in house. They weren't available until late afternoon. And the paper copy for signature, there's a requirement in that packet to have the clerk of the select board sign a certain document. Okay. And I don't recall at the reorganization identifying a clerk. So in yeah. order to finalize that, I think you need to take a vote that identifies a clerk. Yep. And I think we Tim don't really had do a that. comment we about this that. Time. Yep. Okay. Um, usually the junior member or the person that was just most recently elected um, is the person. So Sorry. I, I am giving up my junior, clerkship. Junior in age, right? I, I, am, I am giving up my clerkship to nominate Tim Hilti <laughs> as clerk of the board. I will second that nomination. Uh, <laughs> Casey, may I ask the board to consider a friendly amendment to that to identify the vice chair? It's not something the select board does a lot, but for an organizational purpose, it could be useful. <laughs> so we could just pile K uh, Carolyn on with a vice there chair. There you go. You got rid of one item. I make a motion <laughs> to <laughs> elect. No, I, I, we've never had a vice chair. We've never, we've had, never a had one. Is there but any I reason see, to have one? Well, I see that there's work, that, particularly with the planning board. I see that the vice chair um, helps facilitate with the with the chair okay. um, to do the business. That makes it's sense It's just a in question. Case. You guys can say, no, just do clerk. It's fine with me. You need That's clerk for that. The only th the only problem I have with that is I feel like we always work together really well. Right. And you know, by it, it doesn't matter. But when we when you identify someone's, you know, as a vice chair, I guess it's kind of weird. That's why I asked me. Yeah. But I'm fine with it Say because no. that just designates me as chair. If you're not here, yeah, I think that I makes mean, sense because if I'm not around, it'd be. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a flow, like, and then after that, it'll be it'll be ten. It just kind of goes yeah, in a circle. I mean, it's it, if we can st if we start doing that now, what the heck? Okay, yeah. so so the motion was to um, nominate nominate Tim Hilchy as the clerk, clerk. and uh, Carolyn Shores Ness with a friendly amendment for uh, vice chair. I'll, uh, um. We have a second. I would second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchy, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. It just seems we so are... bizarre that every single one of us has a can we Can we please get the nameplates changed? We need we need <laughs> definition <laughs> of. Oh, come on. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm teasing you. You, you made the motion. Yeah, I just want to make sure I got that right. It's like, Wait a minute. We second too many, too many <laughs> meetings, too many meetings right. already right. today. Exactly. <laughs> Let me state for the record that I don't have good penmanship. So. <laughs> it's fine. Just as long as you got a signature, we're good to go. As soon as I get my computer. All right. So now uh, any public want to comment? Do we have uh, any public? Uh, Denise Mason, I see you there. Do you need anything to say? <laughs> she's, uh... she's, 
She's Just, making you come on. <laughs> I'm just sort of monitoring things. Oh, good. Oh, okay. I've got good. nothing to say right now. All right. All right. But well, thank you. Mr. Chair, with your permission. Yes. In one of my, one of these items, I have an update that Denise may, may add some information to. So during that yeah, discussion, we absolutely. allow her to speak. Of course. Yep. Okay. For sure, You're for on the sure. hook anyway, Denise. Yep. Hang <laughs> tight. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so well, well, since Denise is here, we could just jump down to Denise's thing. Do you want to do that? Shared streets and spaces. Yeah. Or... Yeah, that's fine. That way, she, you know, she doesn't yeah, want to monitor way, Denise, the rest of the Yeah, that way, Denise, you don't have to wait for your thing. That's fine. We so can do it's, that. it's actually two okay. things. Community. It's shared streets and spaces. So we have the grant documents for approval. Okay. They approved us for one hundred thirteen thousand. All right. Engineering and construction work. Um. I was going to sign that contract, but I got stopped by some emergencies in the office last week. Mm -hmm. Part of those contract documents are not filled in. So I need to go back into the Adobe documents and, and type the names and everything in. But what the board needs to do is authorize a signatory to execute them so we can get them back out to the state so we can start that work. Are you, so are you looking for us to recommend you? Whatever the select board wants to do. It's most of those emails are going to come to me anyway. Yeah, so fine. let's just authorize yeah. Casey to be the signatory on the um, shared streets and spaces grant. So 113,000 so we can get going on that. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, how soon? I just had a quick question on this. How soon can we get started on this? Did Once they get the documents and I get their executed response, we can start. Go okay. That's why I was trying to get them out the door Friday and I wasn't able to finish well, it. Well, it would Is be it really in? nice if we had them for school in I fall. Them. Did I not? Um, I, don't, I don't know. What, there's. I'm just looking for stuff in here, but uh, there's federal regulatory stuff. Is that it? Yeah, no. that, that's, mail. that's um, mail. I'll look for it in a few minutes. Okay. But I did oh, print it. So All right. I might have left it on my desk. So is this possible to have this done for school? In fall? I don't know because there's some engineering okay. work that needs to be done. Okay. It would be really nice to have it done for school. I just, you know, kind of. Yep. I hear you. The issue. So do we want to? talk about that grant at all we're done with that we just oh denise no, do you I, want to add anything about the shared uh streets and spaces grant no, I, no, I just have a question um i think at the last meeting didn't we vote a um a different speed limit in town at 25 miles an hour i'm just curious where that was going to be um john was going to reckon you know now that once we have um the attorney general has to approve what mm -hmm. we voted and then john will recommend to us you know the, the chief, list of streets the oh, okay where he wants it implemented okay so maybe to go 35 down to 25 near the school and then i think the beacons and the crosswalks will help with that mm -hmm. yeah okay well good i mean if we can get the money going if casey can sign it and we can get going on it mm -hmm. maybe we can get it for school opening that, that would be great Oh no, I'm I'm totally excited about that. Yeah. Good. Um, lots of great work. Oh, Thank you, Denise. Oh well, Casey. I mean, and the fur cog. They were amazing. That was just really exciting. Yeah. And that, that really is a safety issue. And they it sure is quickly. They've yeah, no, that was great. I mean, we got free engineering work through a grant that they had in house. Yeah. yeah. An extra R on your name. I so know. Just want to fix it up. I'm just ignoring that. All right. Um, then do you want to just talk about quickly the community one stop for growth? grant submission, Denise? Yeah, I think that Alice is going to submit that. Is that tomorrow, Casey, I believe? I think she has all the documents that she needs and more. And I think everyone is really responsive to that. Thank you this, for the select board for sending a letter of support. And also Ju, uh, Julie Chalfont at the last minute also sent a letter, so that's great. So I think we're all set and Alice was really great to work with, you know, with Casey and Dee, so. Good. So, so I, th I think we've got a really good chance of getting that. You have a draft of what the verbiage would look like. There's some elements missing in the draft that you have because there were some details that we needed from Deeds, the architect, mm -hmm. to, to put it in. But the issue with this grant is you submit it in chunks on a portal. So the flow of the grant looks a little different than what will actually get uploaded. So, so what was the final budget? 
bottom line on this? Do you remember what the final budget was? Um, well, I know we want it's we can only get four hundred thousand for a certain right. part. I'm not sure. You know, that's a little confusing. I think we may be able to access more funds than the four hundred thousand dollars. There may be so, more pots, but we weren't. Yeah. Alice no, you have to go. You have to you go from one pot to another pot to the next. Right. Pot. So it's a transitional thing. She thinks we may be eligible for more than one pot. The pot that we're definitely going for is the two hundred thousand in the rural. No, four hundred. Oh, 400,000. 400,000. Yeah. But there's other things we might qualify for. She's, it looks that way, but they need to give us some feedback. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, it looked like it was also, you had to be partially spending whatever they originally give you before you can submit for the next pot of money. I, I think. think so, but we hadn't gotten to that point. Yeah. We were okay. focused on the grant. So you're signing that. Do we need any signatures from us on it? Okay. Sounds good. All right, Great. Denise, that's very exciting. Thank you. I know we are very excited. So I, you know, I don't know what the timeline is in finding out about that, but I'm sure it'll um, take. I believe it's. I believe it's like um, 45 days. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Like well, that's great. Well, we'll have to celebrate. Go back and look at my notes, but it's <laughs> okay. A, it's a pretty quick turnaround. Yay. Okay. Seems a pretty simple. Okay. So I just want to thank Denise for all her help. Yes, thank and, you so much. You know, Denise, well, Denise found Alice, and Alice has been great to work well, with. Well, Carolyn found Alice, and then I Well, <laughs> so it was it, a team effort. Come on, guys. A circuitous route, but it's great working with Casey and Alice, so thank you. Um, I, uh, it looks like, if I go back to my notes, it's, it could be a 45-day turnaround. So that's pretty exciting. That's mm -hmm. pretty fast. That's okay. great. Great. Good. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. You are Denise. welcome. So we don't have any scheduled hearings or uh, appearances, no. any select board uh, reports or announcements? Um, I just want to mention that the senior housing um, survey, needs survey, um, has been extended to June 30th. If anybody needs help, please contact Lily Dwight or um, the senior center, and somebody will sit down and help you. It's an online survey. We really need to get close to 25% um, return rate if we want to make a good case to the, you know, to get financing, you know, private financing. So please, please, this is not the senior needs um, survey, which is what um, Jennifer just had her presentation on. Mm -hmm. That was on programs. This is housing. Do you need senior housing in town? So please make sure you fill out the survey if you're over 55. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, we had a, um, an update uh, on the project, uh, the sewer project today. Um, so uh, a great meeting with Waterline again and, and uh, DPC, our engineers, and um, project is moving along very, very well. We're 50% through um, the first phase of the project. and have very, very few um, change orders. I mean, it's just amazing to be where we're at right now without the change. I mean, we'll have a change order, but there'll be a positive and negative. And I, mean, I think we're like 50,000 over or something like that at the yeah, most. At the most, but we uh, had change orders that we knew we had to yeah. use for contingency. And we've got a couple we coming up. Three. We discussed today that um, we spent a little bit more money on um, some piping, I think, at, at, at the aeration tanks and stuff. But Again, there was another credit because we didn't we didn't need to do. Um, I, forget, I forget what the other credit was for, but anyways, it, it's about a wash. So we'll have another change order to, to execute in the future here. But it um, again, it, it, it's about the same. So we're in really good shape. The only thing that's really, you know, got people nervous is there, there's a control panel was supposed to be kind of get it in May, and they found out in April it was coming in October. So with all this kind of thing, they're they're running into serious problems of getting items especially electrical with chips and every, everything like that but we're just holding our breath and thinking you know we're, we're hoping because this has to do with like um eversource putting the transformer in so we're just kind of holding steady right now we'll waiting to see how that goes and um crossing our fingers but there's a lot of things that got pushed to october so it makes us nervous that everything's going to get out the door in october so anyways, we're still on track to complete in February and that's where we'll stay until we hear any different. But um, so we'll keep USDA up to speed on all of that. Um, 
Yeah, so that's where we're at there. It's going pretty well. In October? Complete in October? No, complete in February. In February. Yep, sorry, I think February. February. Yep. And, um, but we're hoping to get that, that part in October. So, cool. Um, is there anything else? Uh, we're going to have a Selectman's Association meeting on the 14th, uh, yep. Franklin County Selectman's Association that we're working on. And I'm going to host that up at the FERCOG, which is great. They offer to give us the space and we'll have it um, really hoping to get all the Selectmen, you know, newly elected and others back together again to talk about infrastructure needs in Western Mass. So, Hustling yeah. money. Hustling money as usual. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's all I got. Jim, you want to? No, I don't. Uh, good? No. Um, okay. Had my first one on one with Casey today, which was good. Great. And uh, we have some things that we're hoping to to achieve by the next fall annual town meeting. But great. That's great. I'll let her share I, that with you guys at some point. Yeah, sounds good. I, I just want a quick update on the Homeland Security meeting. We, you know, our we have extra money for, I don't want to say extra money, money for cybersecurity. And I'll, I will be trying to reach out with Casey to make sure I know it's that we there. take advantage of that. And then um, I had a soil health meeting this morning. Um, I'm on the state commission for soil health, soil water and um, related resources. And this is a subcommittee that um, I'm sort of chairing and it's on soil health and we're implementing the soil health um, program uh, statewide. And it was very exciting because it seems like our, what we're doing here in Deerfield is going to align with the state. So this is one, we're going to have meetings every two weeks until we get this sorted out. We want to make sure we're ready for the new governor's transition and that we're able to spend the money that's been appropriated by the legislature. So, um, you know, with a good, because there's soil health is so wicked and important. It, it's carbon sequestration will make the difference on whether we can really manage um, climate change. But for us in Deerfield, it's two pronged. We need water retention and storage of filtration because we've got too much water here. And then we also, it's a food security thing. We have the best 5% topsoil in the world and we grow food. And this is where we're gonna be growing food for the future. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's, it's just, an, it could be potentially really impactful here. And so I'm really excited about it. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, Board of Health, Health Agent Discussion Items. Alex. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Welcome. Fantastic, it's been what, two weeks? At least. <laughs> Um, What's new? Alex, can you talk into the mic? Oh, yeah, spin that around for you. There Sorry, you I just didn't want to breathe on it when I wasn't okay. speaking. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I did some uh, septic stuff uh, for um, some final installment inspections with uh, COCs for uh, uh, four North Hillside Road, Seven Stage Road. Um, uh, sign off for um, 401 Greenfield Road. Uh, looks like we're doing well. I did. Uh, we did three Title Fives so far within two weeks. Um, Greenfield Road, Mill Village Road. Actually, two on two Millage, um, Mill Village Road. Um, let's see. Followed up on the uh, Saw Saw Mill Plain Road um, complaint about the about the cars, and it seems like that's been situated. They've been removed. I'm going to follow up again um, about any of the um, the other uh, issues there. So uh, it's it's been um, very compliant. So we're finally Good. seeing some progress. Um, in regards to let's see, went to uh, let's see, number four. Okay, went to a regional health directors meeting with um, Amherst and. Uh, uh, Greenfield and a few other um, departments there. Um, only three municipalities are there and we were just talking about COVID and what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. So it was just a nice little debrief, half an hour session. Uh, yep. We had the usual DPH interagency phone call or webinar. Um, so we talked about COVID and uh, updates of uh, monkeypox and what have you, other communicable diseases. Um, right. 
I did receive notification from DPH um, that we're going to get some antigen COVID tests. So we should come up with some game plan about how we're going to disperse or disseminate that um, okay. for the residents. Um, do we still have some from the last? We round? do. And okay. now these we are. We got the, some from extra from Greenfield. Oh, we did. Right. Okay. And so okay. now this is the individual eye health ones. Oh, yeah. And instead of the box of six or whatever, exactly. 12. Yeah, it's a lot easier to pass yeah. out then. So, I mean, if you guys want to talk about, you know, sort of a game plan, if you want to do like town departments first and then going to mm -hmm. residents, um, it's pretty much up to us and how we want to do it. Um, do the preschools have, um, you know, I, I know the schools get a certain amount, but do they include our daycare in town? Um, so yes, so um, actually I got a separate notification from DPH from the recreational camps that uh, camps are also able to go ahead and get up to 1800 uh, test kits uh, for their camps. So I disseminated that to uh, Deerfield Academy, to mm -hmm. um, River Valley Co-op, uh, yep. just a whole bunch of app applicants that we usually have. Um, in regards to the daycare, though, I think that they're also under that with the early uh, education center department. Um, Could you just check that? Because yeah. in my mind, that would be a priority place for mm. some of those tests. Absolutely. Small, when we get them. Yeah, small world or wherever. Yeah. There's a bunch you of know, different ones around. Just because we've had, yeah. you know, they're, they're still not eligible for vaccines. So, right. You know, keeping doing what under we can. Under five, right? Right. Mm. Doing what we can in the in the daycare is really important, mm -hmm. right. um, and and I certainly, especially for winter time, you know, we want to make sure our highway department and police department have enough. I know yeah, you've been absolutely. giving them to the police department, but we want to make sure that you know the town no, is operational. No chance, yeah. Right? yeah, if we want to continue operations, I think it makes sense to yeah to hang on to a bit of them before. So when fall hits, yeah, we we'll just leave it on the table, right? Sure. No, but I mean, just definitely really have have uh, stocked up for when something hits in the fall because it just feels like that's coming. Right. No, I feel that too. Yeah. I think all of us in that public health professional mm -hmm. field, we're just like, oh my god, it's we're, the cycle. we're not ready yet. We're still. <laughs> I know. It feels um, like we want to just enjoy a summer without it, but yeah. it doesn't seem to. We had 120 away. people vaccinated. Oh, uh, good. Friday on the twentieth. On the twentieth. Great. So that's fantastic. Sixty-six Moderna. Uh, you know, 12 through whomever um, age group. Um, we had only 11 children, the five through 11 year olds vaccinated. Hmm. So that seems rather small, but mm -hmm. our timing with that was just by happenstance with the CDC uh, approval. Um, so, you know. Hopefully people will come to our August 26th clinic yeah, to get boosted. As everyone knows, nationally, it's about five times higher the number of cases right now than what we had last year at this time. But um, the thing is, it's mild, more mm -hmm. it's mild. Yeah. Um, and Omicron, any of these Omicron variants seem not to be providing very long immunity. Even if you get it, you're going to get it again right away right. almost. Mm -hmm. So um, just get vaccinated, get boosted. And, you know, individually take responsibility. If you're nervous about being in, uh, you know, indoors, um, wear a mask, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Because yeah. flu is still circulating. We yeah. have additional flu yeah. cases Let's this do. week. And I mean, which is unheard of. Yeah. So um, well, this early in the game. Mm. Yeah. Well, everybody, no, no, this, this is still late in, the game. Late was, in the game. <laughs> it's everybody didn't have, you know, Matt, they had Matt, so they haven't built up that immunity that we typically have. I don't know. Right. Australia is having a really tough year, so that means we're going to have a tough year coming. And oh, I no. mean, we're, we're trying to come up with strategies every mm -hmm. meeting that we go to, every phone call that we're on, you know, we're asking what other people are doing. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do in the fall. It's right. just everybody's same thing. They can't predict. They don't know nope. what's going on. But I, it looks, I mean, I feel pretty relieved that um, our schools finish on June 13th. It's only a half day on the 13th. We're going to make it through um, before the BA4 and the BA5, which yeah. is the South African um, variant, makes it over here. Yeah. 
And then I just want to mention, did an exploratory hole near uh, 555 River Road. Oh, yeah. And, um, but on the topic with um, PCR, uh, our, the curative PCR center here, um, it, it's still going, you know, that we're still getting really high numbers, even with the additional two locations in, in Franklin County, which is um, um, something we weren't expecting, or at least Tracy and I. Um, but which is good. So there's still a demand for it. But on that note, I also want to mention that um, our state epidemiologist at the Department of Public Health was saying that uh, PCR test is good, but right now, because of the fact there's so much uh, reinfection going on, that actually the best detection right now may be monitoring with the antigen tests. So the ones that the state are going to supply with us, because of the fact that that detection is not like the you know polymerase chain reaction, the PCR one, where it's looking at the shedding of the virus within your system, the antigen one is going to be looking at whether or not you have enough of the viral load that's going to be detectable, aka infectious or contagious. And so, if you are negative with that, there's a really good sensitivity and specificity that you are most likely negative in that regard or positive. Uh, and so, that's actually been we're starting to see that shift right now because of the fact that we really want people to go ahead and see if they are asymptomatic or if they're uh, symptomatic just to confirm uh, with this avenue now with the antigen rapid ones. Um, and then there was a, a discussion about, uh, I got a complaint about a mask, um, you know, pushing for masks to be worn in schools. I just want to bring that up to your attention. Um, I, I don't know what your take on it is for Deerfield. Um, do you I, want to have a quick point? I mean, I just feel like, you know, what we've discussed with the administration is that they do targeted, you know, based on the classroom or, or cases that they have. Um, they've sent out emails to kind of recommend people wear masks right now. I mean, I, I think that's the, the most important thing. And, um, and and then really to target the classrooms where they've had some cases or if there's two in a case, two in a room or something like that. Um, but again, because the, you know, I feel because the cases are so mild, we haven't really had the illnesses that we've had. You know, if, if this was back when Delta was going on or, or, or the first round, it, it, we've just learned so much and watched these different variants come through. And yes, they're infectious, but people are feel bad for a couple of days and they're fine. So it's not like... You know, my, my always my concern is how many people are in the hospital. You know, I mean, certainly if you have underlying conditions and there is always the rare case that if you don't, you wind up in the hospital. But even those that have come into the hospital with these cases, they're not put on a ventilator like we saw in the early days. They're, you know, they're treated. We have medicine to treat them now. We have so much more than we did when this first happened. So it's not the same it's just not the same case. And I think that we're doing a good job monitoring. Carolyn monitors every single case, how they're connected, where it came from. Like, I mean, it's just, yeah. it's almost like the matrix. <laughs> well, you're She's trying to find it. trends. You're trying to find yes. trends. And the and, problem is that it's just so widespread now that and, it's definitely in the, you know, low spread in the community. It's not any one location right. or one source. And I know. feel like you need, when you institute that mask mandate, it's a it's a all stop. We need the public to recognize when we take that step, it's serious and that you need to get on it right away uh, because it's life threatening. People are going to be dying, um, and if you you do this all the time, people get immune to it. And I, I need people to trust that when I make that decision just on my part to be part of a board of health to make that decision to mandate people to be wearing masks then I then it, it's serious enough that I think that that you know I just want people to recognize like hey he do, they don't just do it every time there's a couple of cases it's right. it's it's a serious issue and, and and we need to get we need to get on it so I don't know it's hard um, it's hard to always judge that you'll never do the right thing. You never please everybody, but I, I'm always just trying to look at the data, what, what the case loads are and what, um, you know, how, how ill people are getting and, and that's, then always really, leaving that, that that's the key is how ill that if one people, last thing in your yeah. pocket to be able yeah. to pull right. it out when you need it. And people trust that this is serious if they've asked for that. 
we're going to have um, the epi that is part of our you know public health grant with Greenfield come and do a presentation sometime over the summer and get us ready for the fall when we have some game plans and but absolutely the reason why we're not or I'm not really supportive of the mandatory mask um, at this point is because these are truly mild for the most part illnesses people are still going into the hospital but mm -hmm. they are being treated and they're coming home right what what we need to do is save the mandatory when we say mandatory as you said trevor it's, it's this is stopped. it yeah. you need this is serious we're seeing bad bad outcomes right. please listen to us yep right Tim? i was just going to say that um i was reading reports recently that say with omicron and at least these most recent variants the people that are having serious and fatal consequences are the 65 and older group so in terms of the school system in particular, I think that what's being done by the administrators is the smart thing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and yes, if something changes, oh yeah, then then they need to know that the board of health is is you know been been reasonable about what they've what they've asked. And if they ask you to wear a mask or require a mask, it's it's really serious. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Trying to control the spread of communicable disease that may, yeah, as you mentioned, life threatening or in the sense that I mean. I mean, hospitalization, you know, hospitalization rate is going up, but yeah, I thank you for that. Um, yeah, you're welcome. And then uh, went to the Massachusetts Health Officers Association Tobacco Law Conference. Okay. So um, a whole bunch of uh, people uh, across the Commonwealth um, just attended virtually uh, just about any updates from the FDA to the state and uh, what the local boards of health, you know, may be um, able to do, engage talked about the e-cigarettes a um, uh, quick discussion about um, actually um, yeah just a, a whole myriad of, of new things uh, being updated um, so it seems like our our tobacco regulations are, are yeah we are went there. through that a couple so, years ago and yeah. uh, really hammered down on that for sure we yeah. pulled all the e-cigarettes and um, yep for yeah. sure uh, did a temporary food event at DA um, just uh, last week. Uh, and then Carolyn and I went to the Nature Grant uh, TTA and to the uh, Workforce Capacity mil uh, meetings, separate ones. Um, so, you know, just starting the, the ball going with uh, the Nature Grant, which we're going to talk about um, right now. And then uh, posting for the public health nurse. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you want to hit on that um, nacho, the nacho grant? Makes you yeah. hungry, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, grant <laughs> contract for signatory authorization. It's the National Association of City yes. and County, County Health Officers. Yep. Uh, so we have Nature. a grant to approve. Are, are you signing that, Casey? Well, it needed to be turned around. I don't I don't often do this, but there was a right. very quick turnaround. So I signed it and, and notified we were... the board. What I need you to do is ratify that effectively yep. like May 26th. So make a motion that we um, approve Casey to sign the Nacho Grant on May 26th. I will second that. Any further discussion on it? Um, I just want to tell people what it was. Yeah. Um, uh, Alex, do you have the numbers? It's like 19,000. Uh, yes, it was 19,825 for, for till July 31st. Yep. Yeah. And then another 15,175 um, till December 31st. So yep. it's a good chunk um, of money. We were going to offset um, the overlap for um, our nurse mm -hmm. with the FERCOG. And Alex and I were going to make sure we we're have post that job. Yeah, we're going to post a job so we can have an yep. overlap and then um, and get started on the hours at the senior center. So I'm mm -hmm. so wicked excited because this is um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 2 at the senior center for in the senior center for the temporary one. And then when we move over to the church, they'll be um, situated over there so that people will have um, access to public health nurse three times a week. It's great. So I'm really excited. I also kind of while we're talking about the church, and I mentioned this offhand, but I do want to get kind of our oh, board's approval let's, let's to vote. get the let's, let's vote yeah, let's and then go and into then the church. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, please. Okay, so uh, can I have a motion to 
Um, so you, no, you we have oh, we already mentioned, approve. yes, second, mm. we've seconded, 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 seconded all those in favor. <laughs> Tim Hilgey, aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn, no. I'll okay. get this job eventually. <laughs> Um, okay, so now so you can go just through. talking about that church, I, I, I've talked about this. I want to purchase some shelving so that we can start moving that stuff, all of our stuff out yep. and into, um, into the sanctuary in that entryway and on the, on the back side of that entryway because I think there's enough room for that. Uh, Alex, in the, in the grant, there's some supplies. And, and so maybe we can um, make sure that we sort that out. Alex, is that okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. The board, we just took it, the board, all the money. The board makes paycheck. a determination well, yes. and I will get it done. <laughs> all right. Absolutely. Well, all right. Pull the money is, from Alex's pay. I, know, I, think, I think there is a supply line in the that you know we can buy shelving and, and I definitely wanted some signage. Um, you mm -hmm. know, Jennifer Absolutely. Jennifer had gotten us some really great signage. When we were doing the tree house so we need to just follow up and get you know because we're doing these clinics i don't know how often we're going to have the clinics but we're yeah. going to have more than a handful of them at least so um yes. that seems like an early easy purchase request yeah. so, if that's all right with you yeah. you trevor and Tim. yes it is it's so i guess so what i'm talking about is signage um shelving and possibly a dumpster unless the highway guys have a roll off or something that we can, we got a lot to throw out there. Well, uh, and, and they're going to need it when we do construction as well. There's just a bunch of sign junk. I was going to say, we all, the needles, we have to get rid of some of the needles. Exactly. So I'm not, uh, we'll figure that out. Carolyn, the these meantime, are two separate things, right? What's that? With the, so with the we dumpster just clarify, and with, the, yeah, with the nature grant. And the dumpster, right. they're okay. two separate things. No, 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 Michelle, no, Trevor's just talking in general. I'm talking in but, general. But I don't care how you separate it out, but what, where we do the money store for? stuff for the, yep. the we need to organize all our clarify. stuff. The two of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just want to make sure. shelving to store the materials we use for these um, clinics events. Clinics. Yes. Okay. All of our okay. board of health stuff. And then yeah. signage for the upcoming vaccinations clinics. we'll have. Okay. Yep. And then is the dumpster a separate thing? Uh, the dumpster needs to happen some way or another, but yes, I for mean, it's which, all for what space for the church, because we have all this junk that's kind of mixed into the stuff that we need to save. So there's, we're going to go over there and take all the stuff that's valuable, put it on the new shelving and everything else is going in a dumpster. There's, oh, old I see. Okay. Okay. there's so just we may a need lot. a roll off for that. Okay. I think I, we that's do what I was trying a to small do. roll off, but we have to do it on a specific time frame that we're all, you know, have free to be able to do it. We could just go over there and we can have a work bee. Yeah, for the get board some of health. people helping. I know who to ask for pizza. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to ask, it just shows up. I know. Um, I would say one thing about that. Um, maybe it would be helpful to consolidate some of the things that really need to be disposed of. Yes. And remember your disposal, without a vote, your disposal limit is 500. So yeah. we may have to come back to you for certain items. That's fine. That yeah. need to happen. But we are going to need to know what needs to go and what needs to stay. Well, that's what I'll, I'll, well, I'll go help if, with all that. I'll yeah. Show what it, what's going to go and what's not going to go. There's a needle disposal issue that's mm -hmm. separately. Okay. You know, there's a lot so of I think some of those, I mean, the, like, uh, you know, the, we have, we have tons um, of old needles, old needles. Really? Tons of them. Why do we? Because we, we've, we've been collecting supplies. We've been collecting supplies for fifteen oh. years. Oh, I can just. Is it series cycle, or do we? You know, I can process we that. We need and, to figure that out, and yeah. then keep some of the good know stuff how to do that. and not wow. good stuff. <laughs> oh, there's one other piece to this. So, whenever we get this process started, we need to keep in mind that the organ is still being yes. moved. Yes. And so I had an update from Paul. Of that. Um, they probably will be back on the 27th. Okay. Um, and okay. then they may need some help from us. So I haven't had a chance to reach out to Chris about it, but okay. I, I just want you to know that whenever we start to throw things away, we need to be mindful that they've got to get that organized. Absolutely. Get enough space away from it. Okay. Sounds good. That's good. That's I'll all looking to hit the on. needles. Yeah. So yeah. we're good on that. Um, we just have to go through our supplies. Yeah. And I'll check them. with the FERCOG of the Franklin County Needle Exchange. That'd be great. Yeah. So the um, next item on the agenda is the South Deerfield Wastewater uh, Treatment Upgrade 
loan for approval and signature. So that's related that's, to the clerk that you needed. <laughs> yeah, and so we're going to need um, we're going to need some time to sign here. So um, first, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, sign the. This is the loan, uh, the ban, which we have um, secured for um, the interim financing for the project until we close the loan with USDA. Uh, so the amount um, is fifteen thousand. Uh, 15 million seven hundred sixty one thousand it's at a two and a quarter percent uh general obligation bond anticipated note so it's a ban um the town uh dated june 8th so it'll, it'll start june 8th and payable june 8th uh 2023 to fidelity capital markets a division of national financial services llc who was the winning bid and accrued interest if any plus a premium of uh sixty nine thousand five hundred and six dollars and one cent so this is the vote. So uh, I'm gonna just read all this because it's uh, important to have. And so just bear with me. Uh, oh, actually you should read this because you are the clerk. <laughs> Sorry. You're it. <laughs> You're You're it. it. So starting it further voted. No, right up here. So did you make a motion uh, uh, to gonna, read this? Yes, okay. I make a motion to okay. read this. He's gonna okay. read this. Yeah. I, the clerk of the select board of the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts, certify that at a meeting of the board held June 1, 2022, at which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which quorum was present, the following votes were unanimous, unanimously passed, all of which appear upon the official record of the board in my custody. Voted to approve the sale of $15,761,000 uh, 2.25% general obligation bond anticipation notes, the notes of the town dated June 8, 2022 and payable June 8, 2023 to Fidelity Capital Markets, a division of National Financial Services, LLC at par and accrued interest, if any, plus a premium of $69,506.01. Further voted that in connection with the marketing of the sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of the notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated May 18, 2022, and a final official statement dated May 25, 2022, each in such form as may be approved by the town assistant treasurer be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that the town assistant treasurer and the select board be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver a significant events disclosure undertaking in compliance with SEC rule 15C2-12 in such form as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the notes for the benefit of the holders of the notes from time to time. Further voted that we authorize and direct the town assistant treasurer to establish post issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town assistant treasurer and bond council deem sufficient, or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the notes and to comply with relevant security laws. Further voted that any certificates or documents relating to the notes, collectively the documents, may be executed in several counterparts, each of which shall be regarded as an original and all of which shall constitute one and the same document. Delivery of an executed counterpart of a signature page to a document by electronic mail in a PDF file or by other electronic transmission shall be as effective as delivery of a manually executed counterpart signature page to such document. And electric, electronic signatures on any of the documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purposes of the documents and all matters relating thereto having the same legal effect as original signatures. Further voted that each member of the select board, the town clerk and the town assistant treasurer be and are and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public that no vote was taken by secret ballot, that a notice st stating the place, date, time, and agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of the above votes, was filed with the town clerk and a copy thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours in or on the municipal building, that the office of the town clerk is located, or if applicable, in accordance with municipal 
uh, with an alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the Attorney General as set forth in 940 CMR 29.3 par uh, parenthetical 2B, at least 48 hours, not including Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remained so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decisions in connection with the sale of the notes were taken in executive session, all in accordance with general law, chapter 30A, I don't know if that's two sections, 1825 as amended. Thank you. Do you have a second? A second that. It was wonderful that you read that. Any, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great, I think you signed that one. Right, the town, that's the clerk. Yeah, the clerk of the select board, so you signed that. This one says Trevor only. That, yeah, but that. This is Trevor think. only too, I think they're both wrong. Yeah, I think it's the clerk would sign, right? Just make sure. Yeah, I think so. And we voted him the clerk, so probably right. it was me before right. that. Yeah. So, and then I signed these, and then you'll have this stack to sign as well. And then there's a spot for a town seal and the accountant and the Yeah, clerk. and they'll do that. They'll do that after. Yes. Yep. Stack there for you to sign, and then that can go on top of that when you're done. Yeah. Great. Nice. Well, thank you very much. It is a thank lot of work. Brenda but, yes, and Brenda Sarah and for really Sarah. Facilitating that. Absolutely. Yep. And a lot of work on there. I know. I'm very grateful. So um, let's see. So the next item on the agenda is our uh, wastewater treatment plant Deerfield SSO notification plan draft for review. And that is in your packet. Um, I read it through pretty well. I um, There was one section that they were going to correct or actually there was a box that was not checked and it, and it may have been fixed. Oh, so um, this last section five. So really what I'll just explain what this is, is that we, we had hired uh, DPC or engineering firm because they were doing this for a lot of their clients to um, put together in, in uh, publication an, an SSO uh, public notification, notification plan, which is a sanitary sewer overflow public notification. So if for some reason something broke and we had discharged you know, something uh, wastewater into the uh, Deerfield River or the Connecticut River that was over and above permit or for some reason we had a hurricane and like overflowed our system, we have to then take action to notify boards of health and all the different people, the, the uh, media um, and, and the different people up and down the river, anybody that's gonna be affected by this, DEP. Um, there, there's, so there's just a list of people. What this does is just formulate a plan of action um, and what we would do. So it's fairly short. You know, there's, there's a few sections here that you can read. Um, the one thing I wanted to fix though was uh, the under section five, the web, website subscriber based system. So we have rave, I could still call rave. Is it called yeah, rave? rave. Yeah. So we, we have, you know, that is set up. So we would do a mass media outlet to everybody. We've had this, this, this overage that went out. We call the, you know, W, uh, LLP, WWLP, and the recorder, and um, different boards of health. So what, once that happens, it, this one question here, and it wasn't checked off, is does one of the media outlets serve um, an e, EJ population, which I mean is, I mean, I would imagine is a, um, it, it, um, I can't, the name of environment, uh, environmental justice, environmental yeah, justice, justice population. And I think it does because this river flows all the way down through Holyoke and Springfield. And so I, I just assume that it, uh, the answer to that would be yes. Um, and it just, that was the only thing that wasn't checked. So we have the, the recorder, uh, 22 news their their, yeah, their they, broadcast they, yeah. covers that cover whole area yeah. so i would say that that just and I, I let justin know that that box needed to be checked yes um i think that's all that's there and then this is a draft but once it's done um we would we would just sign it i don't know if we'd make a motion to have the select board chair sign um, well um, yes i would else. i would make the motion to have the select board sign it but um what i'd like to do is nacho is part of that grant mm -hmm. is we can update some of our um, emergency policies 
And um, I last Wednesday, I um, attended um, a dam failure drill, you know, at the dam, it was a Townsend involved mountain, um, you know, failure. Mm -hmm. And um, it really doesn't affect us that much because it comes in off the West River into the Connecticut. And it's so dispersed by the time it gets down here. I mean, it will cause problems, but not huge problems. And it, when uh, unless we it was the Connecticut was fully involved in a already you know, hurricane or something. Yeah, a hurricane kind of situation. Our, our sewer treatment plant would probably be fine. Mm -hmm. But um, what it did is trigger in my mind that um, we haven't had a lot of updating since um, Great River Hydro took over because you know it's, they yep. had some issues with staffing and stuff like that. So. Um, I would like to integrate this with our Board of Health, you know, uh, emergency packet so that it's here in the office mm -hmm. for any of us. Uh, you know, Tim, you're brand new, but, you know, I, ha I have cheat sheets just because, um, you know, over the years I've been so panicky. Yeah. You know, just get your mind going, all that kind of stuff. But I, I think we need to update all our emergency dam response mm -hmm. stuff so um so this could go as, a, as, as an as amendment, a, amendment to, to those and 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 alex time would be paid for by the nature grant because mm -hmm. and we can also include the emergency uh emergency uh management director um Lori. Lori yeah yep. so um because we the the minimal the, what they're doing now is so minimal compared to when we had Irene. Right. And that was bad. And I'm I learned a lot. And I learned a lot um, when Greenfield in Irene, Greenfield sp was inundated and it spilled into the Greenfield Green River that dumped into the Deerfield. And um, that experience was pretty mind boggling to me. You know, it was about a million gallons a day for several days. And you know, we had people out kayaking and sightseeing and, you yep. know, and it's our obligation to go out and help people, yep. you know, get out of the river. So it's, you know, polluted. So um, we've got to come up with something that's a little bit more actionable than this. I, I think this is really great. Yeah, it um, works for what we need. But the moment. it's minimal. And it, well, in this, really, this is from DEP. We need to right. have this. So this is, yeah, we can always expand on this. But I, I just think that you know, who do you notify, you know, the calling tree, who do you notify and what are our obligations like securing, you know, the area of the release and everything. Mm -hmm. So people aren't not like kayaking into the right. stuff. For whatever. sure. Okay. So um, we had a motion. You had a second. Can I ask a clarifying Course. question, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Motion to have the chair, was it the, to have the select board chair sign upon final? Yes, because this is just draft. DPC. Yep, okay. yep, because they, they've got to sure fix that, that right. box and then, um, yes, and then just get a, once they, once it's not in draft form, they just wanted us to motion. review it. Yep. Yes. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get digress, but no, because fine. of that dam drill, it reminded me of dam drill. all the, <laughs> In a damn failure. Yes, language. language. Caroline, oh, come on. Geez. I know. Wow, hold it yourself. Damn failure. <laughs> oh my God, she did. <laughs> does it again. I know, no, but I meant, you know, what I, I know meant. What you yeah. Did. yeah. Yeah. We right. gotta, we gotta um, really figure out what we're gonna. Well, I think, you know, I'd like yeah. to get uh, Tim a copy, you know, uh, when Greg put that thing together for us, that all that emergency stuff, I've got a um, thumb drive with all of our emergency stuff on it that can burn a copy for you Ooh. too just to have i mean you never yeah. know we get taken out and I, there's, yeah i mean i i have we have so many templates i collect templates so that we can like volunteer management templates and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff but it's it, it just is, it gives you like a, a checklist of things that you're responsible for and that you need to think about mm -hmm. in an emergency and if one of us is out of town, then the other person yeah. is responsible. And we did not vote. We yet. didn't vote. Oh, yes. no. So is there any other it. discussion? No. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. I made the motion. Carolyn seconded, just yeah. so you know. I thought Carolyn made the motion. No. no I, oh, well, she, she added on to it. 
Oh. <laughs> I don't even remember now. I, I just want it was a good it was a good segue into yes, it was. Yes. The towns and dam issues. Did you get it? No, I said the towns. Language. Oh, I, okay. I was trying towns to, and... Yeah, I put the <laughs> name on it so it wasn't. Uh, okay, so uh we've got Tim voted, I voted. I voted. Yeah. Okay, good. We're all set. You got it down? I got it down. All right. Good to go. I just like to have um, notes in case we, I have to look. We've done the memorandum of agreement with the Massachusetts Coalition of Police already. So um, we're done shared streets we've done. We've got a one-day liquor license for the Holy Family Parish Picnic. Yes. I would um, get, um, make a motion to approve the one-day liquor license for the Holy Name Parish or Holy Family. Yep parish picnic and i would also um waive the fee recommend okay. waiving the fee i'll second that motion any further discussion it is on uh looks like effective the 20 25th of june yep. through yep. the 27th i guess but it's the 25th right oh june 26th got it that's when it that's when it takes place from 11 30 to 2 p.m so yeah, all those 26. in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye um, Carolyn Nessai. Um, okay. We did the community one stop. We have a CBA request for comment from the Select Board Board of Health on a special permit application for 951 River Road. Let me take a peek at this. So this is um Proponent uh, Jeff Berniski to have a contractor yard to store vehicles, tools, supplies, and various items for business use. And this, I can speak on this behalf if you'd like. Oh, please, yeah. There was a hearing coming up right on June 9th at 6 30 for the zoning board, correct? So yes. I met with the applicant and we discussed the property, and he's he rents or leases the property, doesn't own the property, and it's allowed by um, special permit to have a contractor's yard there. I requested that he submit it with the application a list of vehicles so that, you know, it's not like we just have a junkyard of broken down vehicles. And so he supplied that. He highlighted on the map um, where the property is. He did indicate that in the future, if um, other land uh, issues are solved, that he would like to, you know, purchase the property um, from, you know, from the landowner. But at the moment, he would just like to use it as a contractor's yard. And Bob Walden was okay with everything that he said in the meeting and the application. And I believe he wrote a comment. Okay. Yeah, and he's listed. Um, he's got a copy of the code, and then the list of vehicles there is a '91 International hook lift, '98 Ford rubbish truck, a '98 GMC 750 knuckle boom, a silver auto truck. The rest are just equipment items. Um, Forty foot high cube shipping container. Um, it's not 40 foot high, is it? Must be long. Yeah, I was going to say it's a high cube shipping container. I wouldn't think it's 40 feet tall. <laughs> That'd yeah. be a big, big item. Uh, two 20 foot shipping containers, several miscellaneous size roll offs and rear load disposal containers, up to five personal vehicles, obviously, when they're going to work. Um, and this is. So That's just a picture of the yard with the black. It's kind of hard with your. Oh, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Near yeah. the railroad track. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't have, I mean, you said it's allowed, right? It, it is allowed with special permit through the Zoning Board of Appeals to have a contractor yard. So I don't see any problem with it. I don't either, as long as he keeps it, you know, somewhat, like you said, it doesn't turn into a junkyard and he's got a list of items that he's, he's putting there. So I would make a recommendation that the select board could write that as a comment mm -hmm. is that it's it's well maintained and if there's any um you know super increase of vehicle or waste or you know right. that 
Yeah. Yeah, we take a look. Okay. Mm -hmm. Want to make a motion? And if you could fill it out and sign it, that would be wonderful. Um, I'll, I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Oh, Carolyn Ness, I am sorry. Thank you. Oh, that's no problem. I'm sorry. I um, got distracted. I second it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it might have to do with that other ID since we were last one. So we have appointments, resignations, annual appointments. Yes, we have the annual appointments. There should be several lists. In there. There's there's a list from the police department. There's a list that's been developed. Um, you know what I'd like to do? I'd I'd like to um, appoint the police and the EMS tonight, so we have we know we don't have any lapses in emergency mm -hmm. personnel. Um, but I would like to take a few moments for us and and. Um, look at our regular appointments to um, make sure because um, uh, like Pam Predmore is not um, listed here on the ad hoc senior committee and um, you know so I just would be really great is if Lily could send those updated if that updated information yeah to Pam. well we just appointed her and um yeah, so we, we should send that to us. Yeah, so if we could wait, wait on the regular and then look at the vacancies and see how we can handle the vacancies, um, that would be good. So I would um, make a motion to um, appoint uh, John Pechor uh, Chief Pachorek has forwarded us um, the list of officers. Okay. Um, so we have John Pachorek, senior as chief. Junior. Um, junior. Yep. I mean, junior. junior. Yep. You could just and say as presented in the As document. presented. Okay. Yeah. Um, we all have the list, right? Yeah. Yep. I do. Okay. It's in the packet. So then I, I will make a motion to appoint um, everyone he has uh, presented to us. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, then I would also make a, a motion to appoint the South County EMS as um, uh, presented by uh, our director, Zach Smith. Just want to say that um, there was one item that was supposed to be removed and I just made a strike through. I see so. the strike through. Yep. yep. So that yes. was, it. yeah. Yep. So I'll, I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Question. Um, we also have appointments for DDIC. Yeah. And okay. um, Sean Libby, who volunteered to sit on Conservation Commission. And those, I, what I would suggest is we do those appointments um, based on, you'll see that there, each one of these particular appointments have their own docket. So vote, again, it's a question of voting as presented. Um, I am thrilled to death that we have such a qualified person for conservation 
commission. So what is the actual term for Sean that we're voting? Sean it looks like be... beginning June 1st, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2025. Yep. Okay. Three years so two. I would wait 2022 to 23? 25. 25. Okay. Yep. Um, I would make a motion to appoint Sean Libby to um, the Conservation Commission, um, effective Great June um, of 22 to um, June of 25. I'll second that motion. Wow, he's just, really qualified. Yeah, just, yeah, just to clarify, um, this this is appointing him beginning June 1st, so that's today. That's correct. And yes. uh, once he's sworn in. Yes, once correct. He, right. Yep, he needs yes, to come see the clerk and in. sworn in. Yep. Right. Let me let me just make that June first, twenty twenty two to June thirtieth to June thirtieth, twenty twenty five. So to clarify. Yep. I'll well, second um, that clarification. Yeah. Wow. This is really great. Oh, it's going to be great. Yep. Yeah, and it's going to round up the commission's ability to more effectively uh, respond to tree cutting requests, et cetera. Yep. So. Absolutely. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all very much. Um, do you want to do you want to go forward with the D deck? Yeah, that's okay. fine. I make a motion to appoint Ralph Healy and um, Robert Decker the third to um, D deck. This term begins June first, twenty twenty two, to June thirtieth, twenty twenty five. I'll second that motion. And um, I would just like to have somebody briefly explain to me what the, these gentlemen do for DDIC. Yep. So, so they, uh, DDIC is the Deerfield Economic Development Industrial Corporation. It was formed back in the 70s when Rural Tool came in and to develop a economic development space for an industrial park. So they continue to meet monthly to address the needs of the people that are in the park and, and proactively look for, um, you know, keep, it, the, park moving, so. keep the park moving. If there's any openings coming up or something like that, they would look to fill them. Mr. Chair, may please, I please, please, please. So in terms of what they do for the park, they really manage the operations, the land sales, that sort of thing for the park. But what they also did several years ago was they changed the structure of the park to include other elements of of business so it, it used to be industrial mm -hmm. just industrial mm -hmm. and with industrial fading industrial and manufacturing fading away um opening up the park to other ventures and commercial business um became something that ddic wanted to pursue so they went through an entire process of the legislative body approval and then <coughs> to the state to make that change and so these gentlemen get together once a month and they discuss the issues they have to deal with from a management perspective for the park. Mm -hmm. Actually, the two sides of the park. Mm -hmm. Are there currently any vacancies or? Yes, I think there are, right? Because I don't know. Well, Actually, we had appointed Chris Harris, but he has moved out of state. And, uh, you know, he was attending a bit for uh, for a while during COVID by remote, but, I, but I'm not sure he's still attending. I'd be I don't from, think so. They've no. attempted to do it a hybrid meeting. Yep. And um, basically, they meet in person at eight forty-five. They're going to be meeting on the ninth. Right. Um, in to, town hall. And te and Chris tends to be on the east coast, so he'd be getting up at like five in the morning to kind of attend the meeting and west. You know, west coast. Sorry, west, west coast. Yeah. <laughs> he's in Indiana. Oh, is he now? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he was in California. No, he's in Indiana. Uh -huh. um, but uh, he still has a residence at 68D. Oh, he does. North Maine. Oh, okay. I thought he moved he's out. Not here often because yeah. of COVID, et cetera. Right. Yeah. So I, that was the only vacancy I knew of, or whether he was still participating. I'm not yeah. sure. But okay. um, but he's not up for, for an appointment it's, this year. No, but, he's not. Um, yeah. But yeah. Any other? No, no, no. Nope. Okay. So I want to thank them for their service and um, any further discussion all set. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right. So that is done. Um, and we're holding off on the other appointments at the moment. 
Is that what you want to do? Well, yeah, I'd like to look at the list. Okay. Um, and I just have a couple of questions on yep. a couple of things. We'll do that. We can take it up next meeting. Yep. Um, we do have uh, a resignation. Let's see. Please accept my resignation from my position as administrative assistant to the building departments, uh, Sue Brulette, and that would be effective June 10th, 2022. We'll hear a, do, oh. we just, do we need to take a motion? Oh, so you motion to accept, accept please. Um, I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you for your service. Yep, good luck. And then let's see, what else do we have? policies remote work do you want to talk about that so the remote work policy i don't have a draft so i apologize it's okay but i talked to kate about it and because of how we have to deal with hybrid meetings and the fact that these can expect we can expect these to go on for from now until december 15 2023 um putting a policy in, into place will help us monitor performance. Um, and I had talked to Kate about it. We had a remote policy, a remote work policy in our COVID emergency measures. So I'm going to use that sort of as a jumping off point and add some elements like um, forms and stuff for the board to take a look at. Because as we move forward, we really need to refine this since it hasn't really gone away. And we now see an indication through the legislature that they're going to put it off as long as they can. Frankly, I don't know what what that reasoning is. If any of you talk to our legislative delegation, well, we'll try to find out. Um, it it really just leaves us hanging, and and so we need to make some some changes so, to it. So, what have you heard? Like, I read Joe Comerford's email from this morning, I think, or yesterday evening. Um, they pushed it off because. They're still taking comment on it. I think there must be people that are in favor or not in favor, but functionally, it really limits us in terms of being in the same operational space as private sector. And I don't think that's been made very clear. So one thing that Joe said, and I think you got it, but if you didn't, I can email her, send no. that email to you. But one thing she said is they're still taking comment about it. And it's, from my perspective, I think we've proved we can do it because we had to. And now to make that go away makes it really difficult for us to encourage participation. On the other hand, this, and I will point directly at Jennifer, this is not an easy thing to manage. Mm -hmm. So it, we're, we're trying to balance accessibility and inclusion with the functional operation. And I think by them sitting on the fence and not pushing off decisions, it really just leaves municipalities in a bad place because our expectations can't, we can't be making concrete decisions did without us, knowing. Did she, they give us a date to when it was pushed off to? December 15th, 2023. December? December 15th, 2023. So a whole year and plus, yeah. See, I sent you guys an email and then I took the first two comments off because I was so mad. I can't believe that. It, they're just kicking the can down, wow. down the street. I, so, I don't so the July 15th is dead. It's now, so it's dead. We, mm -hmm. we can now go on planning okay. to have remote participation until December 15th of 2023. Did the governor sign that? Because I had a statement. This meeting. was in their Senate budget. So by, by, so I don't think, by, it's, so I don't think it's been it's finalized. It's not law yet. It's not finalized, but it, it, it's effect. It, they're saying okay, that's the effective date I, they want to push had, I just had a meet, state meeting today and we had to schedule our next meeting because of that date and it was state agencies that council sent us an email I can forward it to you and I think I sent it to you god this is such a pain that they are trying to do this do you want me to read it no that's okay it's just we're scheduling meetings around that June 15th, right July and we 15th didn't know day. until yesterday afternoon all right well, you can now you can do hybrid until next December. So, so here's what Lisa sent to us. We're writing to inform you that the FY23 state budget passed by the Senate on May 26 extends yet again the remote meeting provisions of the governor's March 12, 2020 COVID-19 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. 
this time through December 15, 2023. If and when the House and Senate reconcile the budget and the governor signs the budget, you may continue to hold open meetings in accordance with said order. So we can expect them to come to some consensus on that. Oh yeah, but just because it passes Senate doesn't mean it's not, it has to go through the House and it has to have right. the governor sign it. So that date may may stand and it may not. Well, but my problem is, is it really doesn't give us concrete ability no, to doesn't. serve the public. That is my issue with it. I know. Yeah. Well, okay. but that's what well, that's the best we can do at this point. We right. know it's so going to be extended. I don't know how to plan if they're not going to, I don't know how much that date's going to change, but it certainly, there's an indication they want to push it down, kick that can down the road beyond July 15th. That's kind of what we're planning for. So, yeah. so I think we need to plan, plan for that. I would yep. plan at least through the fall. Okay. So uh, for mail, I wanted to, um, read a thank you letter we got from M.A. Sweetlin um, to... Um, and the Energy Committee. Yep, and the Energy Committee. Uh, good afternoon. The Deerfield Energy Committee would like to thank Chris Miller from the DPW and Jason Miller, uh, Deerfield Tree Warden, for providing wonderful support, planting trees at the uh, elementary school and at Frontier. They delivered the trees from the tech school and stayed to help move the trees around. The plantings were also assisted by the tech school students and uh, teacher who grew the trees. The pre-K and kindergarten at DES and a group of students from Frontier. It was a fun way to celebrate Earth Day and to make Deerfield greener. So thank them all very much for their efforts. Um, can we just make sure, Casey, that Chris Miller and Jason are uh, um, notified? Yep. Because I, I have to say, Chris is Chris Miller has been yep. so He's responsive. He's been doing yep. an amazing job picking yep. up the pieces and running with it. We got um, a couple of items uh, from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission FERC on uh, Great River Hydro. Um, it looks like they have got, I don't know, they're inspecting the dams. Is that right? Yes. It says under investigation. There's two of those. And then there's also a notification of them drilling and replacing some uh, piezometers, in case anybody wants to look that up on Google, for the furatic surface. So um, we can, we can, provide the information if people want to see it, but that's what they're working on. So they noticed us on that. Um, we also have um, a, a nice letter from the Eagle Brook School. They were um, <clears throat> their uh, board of selectmen or Deerfield Deer Select Board um, enclosed as a check for uh, 33,500. Um, so it's 26,000 represents Eagle Brook's gift to the town of Deerfield and appreciation for services rendered. This gift is for the period of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. The remaining $7,500 represents Eagle Brook's seventh payment towards its pledge for the, De uh, the elementary school roof. Um, so we thank them very much for their, um, their payment to the town, gift to the town. Um, we also have a vacancy notice for the Deerfield uh, for the administration assistant for the building department and um, job description. So you assume that's going to go out. And so my question good. to the board, Mr. Chair, through you mm -hmm. is: We would need so this would put us in a bind administratively. So my request to the board is to approve the draft job description in front of you. Um, it will have to go to personnel board on June 16th. Yeah. Generally, when that happens, I put a draft on it. I use it, I sit, mm -hmm. reference it as draft and notify the personnel board of the need to do this. So then we need to begin that hiring process. So really what the board, what I need the board to do is um, instruct me to, to begin the hiring process, which will then include posting of the vacancy, posting of the job description, which is ready to go. Thank you, Jennifer. She did. She she's got all that ready to go, and begin the intake for applications. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you both for your work on this. I know it does put you in a bind, and really appreciate you working on this to get full Thank staff. You. We appreciate your support. Sure thing. Um, there is, uh, let's see, next quick. Um, I don't think we don't need a town administrator support unless you want to hit on a few well, things. Well, there's one thing that I want to bring up. So in relation to the administrative assistant um, need to hire, I would respectfully request the board authorize me to hire a temporary person to fill in for at least 
up 19 hours a week as soon mm -hmm. as possible so that we could provide some coverage not only to that department, yep. but possibly to other departments. As you know, For we have sure. a staffing yep. shortage. We've and talked about that. I will yep. say, you know, I the town the assistant town administrator and I um, long ago, far away, planned our vacations and we inadvertently planned them at the same time within a day How of each dare other. you. <laughs> we didn't realize that we were doing that. Um, right. Yeah, but right. We you both guys have work a situation together. where it's Jennifer subliminal. hasn't gone on vacation right. in three years. It's subliminal. And I've taken a, I've taken, like, I took a week off last September, but really Not in order enough. for us to, to be more effective, we should probably leave. I don't usually like doing that, but there was no way I could say no to her. No, and you frankly, don't my need husband your time to so take it until right before she, she told me. Right. So um, with that in mind, having a temporary person to fill in, to cover phones, phones yep to to sort of support some of these other functions that are a lot of them are communication functions yep. and possibly some you know intakes of products and stuff would be helpful well there's definitely some need among many offices here talking here. with sarah and you know i know you've got your finger on the pulse so i get that and i i so so moved i appreciate i approve you know so if, the board, if the board's okay with that, yep. I'd like to be able to hire somebody on a temporary basis. Yep. I make the motion to authorize Casey to do that. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we have a, um, a meeting coming up June 15th or what is that? Um, we have 15th. the, well, I, Casey needs to um, oh, post, post the to the 14th. For the for the FERCOG meeting or the, the selectman meeting up at the FERCOG oh, on the fourteenth. Jennifer, we need to post a meeting. She, oh crap! Okay, hold on. And then if you know you're welcome to attend. It was for uh, select boards and town administrators. So you know, I didn't even attend, think about that. You don't have to Do you, attend. No, you trust me. Take a night off. But I'm just saying the invitation's there if you'd like okay. to come. All of our I think six representatives will be there. So all of our. Um, so yeah, everybody, all our legislative delegation is going to be there. So yep. I want to make sure that's posted. What time um, is that? The, what's that? What time <coughs> is that meeting? It, it's going to be at six o'clock in uh, at the FERCOG, twelve Olive Street, I think it's called. Okay, yep. I'll but post it, that tomorrow. Oh, thanks so much. Appreciate that. And then um, June sixth, the uh, the Tim old, and yes, I overbuilding. Yep. June sixth is a MVP meeting that tim and i will both be at and so um that I posted be... you posted okay, okay great. great um I, i'm trying to think if there's anything else um okay that's all i can think of offhand i guess okay also um so alex will be filling in for me for that week and um, putting my out of office that says that if people need help with postings or he's going to be answering my phone okay. and um, my email, it, his email will be on my out of office response. Yep. So if, you know, if there's needs for a, a posting, you can send uh, him the request and he'll work with Pat to get that done. Okay. Thank you, Alex. I hope you all really Which Alex is this? Sorry, not you. <laughs> the other Alex. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoy your vacation. I don't know if we'll see you before then, but just you deserve it. You've worked so hard this last year, and um, I can't thank you enough Two for years. everything you did. Yes, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Both. Yeah. Okay. Both. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Casey. So I do have a couple of things that I want to bring up. All right. Um, I'm following up on the public comment from last night's meeting from Bruce St. Peter's. Okay. I've got two staff members helping me with that. I All don't right. know that I will have an answer by Monday, but we're going to try. All right. I have sent some questions to the library director related to a comment from the library trustee last night. I had a discussion with Tim, Tim in our meeting this morning, or yeah, this afternoon with Tim and Jennifer. It's about the Hamshaw Lumber Project, which yep. relates to the Leary lot. Right. So Jennifer suggested that we sort of use a better way to keep this on the radar screen. So she's going to work with Bob Walden and he's going to get in touch with the engineer to outline. Right. I sent you guys an email with a list of things that we need to do in terms of process. So she's going to have him work with the engineer to facilitate, have 
she's going to work with Bob so Bob can communicate with the engineer while we're gone okay. so that when we get back, hopefully we'll have some response from them. And I appreciate that Tim brought it up and that Jennifer found a solution. So our, you know, I know we're going to try to get together to have some kind of priority list, but who, what select board mem member do you want to be, you know, the point person on? Cause that's pretty much how, you know, we follow up on that. I think we have to figure out what their response is first. Okay. How, yeah, we can do that respond. after, but definitely, I think that's important to do once we get we, a, once we, the staff gets a, a good yeah. list together. Yeah. Because to that's that's the only way we're gonna be able. You know, you know how we sort of parcel yeah, out yeah. the work. Yeah. Um, you know, we just need to make sure that we're we're moving on it. Yeah. So the the, the basic idea is that um, by the the fall special town meeting we've moved this to a point where we can actually do something that will allow the project to go forward. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I thank Casey and Jennifer for figuring out, you know, let's, let's move this forward be, because with, uh, with Bob's help, Casey doesn't have to think about this and, right. um, until it, until she has to think about it, right. as opposed of to course. being responsible for thinking about it and doing it. Yeah. So I uh, also don't mind being the point person in the office for questions or responses. It's just right. that. So I wanted to pull Bob in, if, you know, because of this vacation week to get the ball rolling and to have the conversations and to start on sort of our checklist of things to get done. So um, Bob was on board. I already spoke with him and he's going to be reaching out tomorrow and, you know, we can, you know, and then I can take over when I get back. And that, okay. that first piece is being, you know, getting the, getting the surveys done. Correct. Know, yeah. So that we know what the lot sizes are and what. Because there's a connection. We can talk about what it's, pieces it's of land. It's just easier if we. Yeah. I'm one person right? and i'm happy to be that person if that's yeah. the case great okay that's great love it it's just we you know you need the dog after it oh yeah well i brought the bone to the party so i guess i can keep <laughs> chewing on it yeah. um you, you have a tip meeting on friday i was so about that's to good. say just, that so yeah, I figured you would. in response yeah. to new pros request for a tax incentive financing agreement we have a tiff group meeting on friday at 3 p.m. and we'll start to go over that. I have, I spoke to Derek last week and then I, I had had a, an email drafted. I just had to go back and look at it. So I spoke to him, told it, him it was coming. He sent me a reminder email and, you know, so I had already tweaked what I was ready to send him. I just had to hit send. So I sent that out. So he knows we're gonna probably get back in touch with him for more information. As part of that email and discussion with Derek Healy, I mentioned to him that I had checked in with the state, um, the Office of Business Development. They have a part to play in this as well. Mm -hmm. So to Tim's point about town meeting, what we need to have ready is a substantially complete agreement mm -hmm. that they can review the language for, for proposal to town meeting in October. Okay. Now that has to get to the, we don't have time to do it for June but that has to get to them for September. And so we did this before, um, we've, we've done this a couple of times, but their process is they're trying to streamline things and they are doing things remotely. So he told me where MOBD comes in, Kevin, I mean, mm -hmm. told me where MOBD comes in, told me where we need to be so that we can get a conditional approval from them and then we would again take this to town meeting, probably the same town meeting that, mm -hmm. that Tim was just mentioning. Yep. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is we've got some, so the stuff that's sort of taking over the airspace right now, we've got several HR issues. And one of the things is capacity in the office. So mm -hmm. I have some thoughts about that, but I'm not ready to write them down. You'll probably see something from me by the first meeting in July. Right. Um, park project facilitation, planning board approved the stormwater and the site plan review. Um, our next pieces are going to be conservation commission. Yep. And we'll work with our project team on that. The community one stop grant, as Denise said, mm -hmm. will go in either tomorrow. At the latest, it has to go Friday, but we're planning for tomorrow. And we, as you know, it's June. 
So we've already started the end of year budget evaluations. We know we have several transfers yep. and je basically Brenda and I need to meet and go over that. But for purposes of, of impacts on capacity, I think everybody needs to understand that some of this stuff needs, Jennifer needs to be trained to do some of this stuff mm -hmm. so I can focus on other projects. Yep. So we're starting to pull her into those discussions. Great. And Brenda's very on board. Jennifer's a little scared, but she'll be fine. It'll all get there. So that's what you're going to start seeing is some delegation and deployment of resources as much as we can. Okay. And that's pretty much what I have for right this second. Well, thank you. Anything else? I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you all very much. Have a great night everyone.